Hi, we're the Complexity. Hi, my name is Ryan. I just graduated from Arizona State University with my Master's in Computer Science, and I'm the team lead of Complexity. Hello, my name is Tyler. I'm in ninth grade and I'm part of the hardware team, and I designed this thruster tester. Hello, my name is Hudson, and I'm going into ninth grade. I'm responsible for programming the computer vision and navigation systems on the AUV. Hi, my name is Thomas. I am going into ninth grade and I am in the hardware design team. I am responsible for the wiring diagrams and I am currently building the drive tester. Hey, I'm Alex and I'm going into ninth grade. I'm currently part of the software and the hardware team and I'm working on developing the vision along with having the full robot. For our skill video, we focused on the propulsion system. RoboSub requirements for the propulsion system include a design for safety, they need to reliably work underwater, and complete the planned missions in under 20 minutes. We took these high-level requirements and derived some specific requirements for the propulsion system of our own. The sub needed to reliably work at a depth of at least 30 feet for at least 20 minutes. It needed to have three degrees of freedom. It had to have motion in the XY plane as well as in the Z plane. In addition, to improve our vision processing, we wanted the sub to be able to strafe. In order to complete the missions in a timely manner, we determined the propulsion system must meet minimum speed requirements, 3 miles per hour in the forward direction with an ultimate goal of greater than 5 miles per hour, 1 mile per hour while strafing, 1 mile per hour up and down in the Z plane. The propulsion system must also support variable speed operation. The energy requirements for the propulsion system include being only battery powered, sufficient power to meet the minimum speed requirements, sufficient energy storage to meet the 20 minute competition runtime, sealed battery and less than 60 volts DC, and the vehicle cannot exceed a weight limit of 125 pounds. The components of a propulsion system include propellers, propeller guards, electric motors, three-phase wiring, feed-throughs to a waterproof enclosure, electronic speed controllers, otherwise known as ESCs, a control computer, and a battery. Each of these components has specific derived requirements based on the propulsion system requirements, and these will be discussed later in the presentation. Before delving more into the propulsion system, I wanted to discuss some of our competition strategies. One of our initial game strategies for the propulsion system was to design a sub that had the ability to complete two full runs in the 20 minute time period. This would double our chances of completing all the tasks if something went wrong during the initial run. This is what drove the minimum forward speed requirement in our propulsion system design. The second strategy for the propulsion system was to ensure we could move the robot in any horizontal XY direction. As the robot approaches the gate, the ability to make slight corrections in the horizontal plane in any direction in 360 degrees allows for greater control of the robot to choose the side, follow the path afterwards, or choose the correct buoy in the make the grade mission. Being able to move in this manner allows the robot to move in any direction without rotation, making image tracking and navigation significantly easier and more reliable. We have not been able to test this in the water yet, but we believe designing the propulsion system in this manner will make our autonomous routines more reliable and consistent. In addition to this, going back to attempting two full runs, we wanted to find the optimal vehicle cruising speed in order to maximize our battery. Finally, the propulsion system strategy for the coin flip and the style points was to have symmetrical positioning of the thrusters and propeller rotation in order to rotate the sub in a 360 degree motion without changing the sub's position in the XYZ plane. This would provide greater positional accuracy at the end of the maneuver to continue to the next task. Here's our propulsion system. Our propulsion system consists of a 16 amp hour 4 series battery, a mode AI flag core as seen right here, a mode AI voxel as seen right here, and two Furling 32 4-in-1 ESCs that are attached to six Blue Robotics T200 thrusters. Here you can see the placement of our thrusters as well as the propeller's spin direction. Thrusters one through four, which control the movement in the horizontal plane, are positioned at 45 degree angles, allowing for strafing as well as movement in any direction in the XY plane. In addition to this, 
It allows rotation around the central z-axis of our robot. Thrusters 4 and 5 control movement in the z-plane. We have both clockwise as well as counterclockwise propellers to minimize the rotational effects caused from a propeller spinning. In order to make modifications to our sub for stability purposes, we made measurements of the center of gravity and center of buoyancy. To do this, we adjusted the center of gravity by moving the battery to make sure that our thruster positioning remained symmetric. In addition to this, we moved our ballast to ensure that our thrusters are symmetric around the center of buoyancy. Our center of gravity is slightly below our center of buoyancy for stability. To further illustrate our propulsion system, my teammate Thomas made a great wiring diagram in Fritzing. Here you can see the six T200 thrusters being attached via their three-phase wires to the two Furling 32 4-in-1 ESCs. These in turn are connected to the flight core, and all of them are powered by our 16 amp hour LiPo battery. This is our electronic speed controller. This is an important component of the propulsion system on our sub. It takes current from the battery and commands from the control computer to achieve a particular speed on the thrusters. This particular ESC is a four channel version. It can control four thrusters in a compact form factor. Knowing the maximum current and voltage of our thrusters, we determine the exact model to use, the Furling 4 and 1. This ESC can support 45 amps on each channel at a maximum of 20 volts. Plenty of headroom for our T200 thrusters. Another design decision in picking this ESC is the protocol it supports. The microprocessor on this ESC runs the BL Heli 32 firmware. This firmware allows setting the rotation of the motors, such as bidirectional soft forward and bidirectional soft reverse, as well as many other parameters. The maximum update rate of the motor speed is also controlled by the firmware's communication protocol. The control computer communicates with the ESC over a one wire interface per thruster. This ESC supports the DSHOP protocol which is a digital protocol. And unlike the traditional PWM protocol, allows us to query telemetry data from the ESC, like temperature, voltage, current, and RPMs. The update rate of the ESC determines the maximum frequency of any control loop used in the propulsion system. Anything faster than this frequency will have no effect. Traditionally, most subs are running their ESCs at 50 Hz. We have yet to determine the ideal control loop speed. However, since we are using DSHOT, we can run our control loop considerably faster if we determine this is beneficial. We can even go up to several kilohertz. Here's a video of us trying out our thrusters for the first time in a manner similar to the diagram shown in the previous slide. I'm going to talk a little bit about an experiment that we used to test our thrusters. Here you can see Tyler doing some mechanical design to create our thruster tester apparatus. This apparatus was used to directly characterize the thrusters running on our sub. After building the mechanical apparatus, we needed a way to measure the compression and tension that would be caused by our thruster propulsion. To do this, we used a S-type load cell and the HX711 load cell amplifier. After finishing the apparatus, we developed software utilizing the ESP32, creating a web server, and allowing clients to access it in order to have complete control of any ESC and saving this to a CSV file for further evaluation. Here is what our final thruster tester apparatus looks like. To perform our thruster tester, we incremented the PWM values in steps of 25 from 1500 to 1900 and 1500 to 1100. While doing this, we would record the force and current for 5 seconds, then we would calculate the mean and standard deviation and write this to a CSV file. Here you can see a brief snapshot of our web server collecting data. You can see it's collecting PWM value, average force, and standard deviation, as well as what thrusters were on or off. Here's a video of our thruster tester apparatus performing our thruster experiment. Here are the experimental results of our thruster test using two Blue Robotics T200 thrusters. This graph allowed us to characterize our thrusters. On the y-axis, we have the force mean in pounds thrust. On the x-axis, we have the PWM in microseconds. The different lines represent the different voltages we used on different tests. From these results and monitoring the current during the experiment, we determined a 16 amp hour 4S LiPo battery would provide enough power for our six thruster configuration for the 20 minute run. Furthermore, we determined that at maximum forward speed, our configuration could provide over 30 pounds of static force. 
We have not measured the drag of our robot to determine if this will meet our three mile per hour goal.